Hi, I'm Dr. Jack. This video we will be discussing details on colon cancer and specifically we will look at things like risk factors, signs and symptoms, the screening process and when you should get screened, as well as lifestyle choices and what you can do in that department to minimize your risk. And then we will end with some bloopers. So please stay through the whole video and let's just jump right into it. Hi, and if you're new to my videos, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I am Dr. Jack, and if you want to get to know me a little bit better and what I'm about and my background as well as what this channel is about, then I'll put a link down below about my previous video so that you can get a better understanding. But for today, we will be covering colon cancer, and unfortunately what motivated me to make this video was the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Bozeman at the age of 42 from colon cancer. And you know, I thought he was a great actor. Uh, for those of you who don't know him, he was the lead person for Black Panther, part of the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know what to tell you. You're missing out on the greatest cinematic experience of our lifetimes, but that's a whole other discussion. Um, but the unfortunate passing of Mr. Bozeman at such a young age really hits home for myself and I'm sure a lot of his fans and loved ones. I believe that with anything negative that happens, it happens for a reason and I try to make something positive of it, if you will, and if that results in me you know, rushing this video to get it out, a lot of people for the first time are hearing about colon cancer or maybe not for the first time but are becoming more aware of it due to what happened. And you know, if that led you here, and if it's yourself or telling a loved one to go and get screening, then we catch cancer early because we all know that the name of the game with cancer is basically trying to catch it as early as possible to have the best results. Then you know, that's taking something negative and hopefully you know, having some sort of positive outcome down the road. But without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and jump straight into it. We're gonna start off by talking about the anatomy and the function of the colon. The anatomy is such that you have the ascending colon and transverse as well as descending and then the sigmoid and then the rectum. So the whole point of the colon is basically to pull out things such as electrolytes, vitamins, water and to form the feces or poop if you will uh, and propel it along to expel the waste. That's a very general description of it all but it's a good starting point for the purposes of this educational video. Let's talk about who is at risk. The CDC website lists that 90% of colon cancer occurs in individuals that are older than the age of 50. That goes for men and women. And for men and women, it is the third most common cancer. They estimate that in 2020, about 150,000 people will be diagnosed with colon cancer in the United States, and about 53,200 people roughly would unfortunately pass away from colon cancer. In your lifetime, you will have a 4% risk of getting this form of cancer. And the good news is that for the last several decades, the death rate of colon cancer has been decreasing. So fantastic. But the bad news is that if you're below the age of 55 and diagnosed with colon cancer, the death rate has increased each year by about 1% from 2008 to 2017. So what are the signs and symptoms to look for if you suspect colon cancer? Well, one of them is a persistent change in regards to the consistency of your stool. Your stool. <laughs> and that is whether it is constant constipation or diarrhea, and it has to be persistent, as well as noticing blood in your stool, and whether you have severe cramping uh, or abdominal pain or just lots of gas. Now, I know some of you are probably sitting at home and thinking, gosh, my husband or my boyfriend has gas all the time. You know, maybe they have colon cancer. I assure you that's probably not the case. The key is that it has to be persistent. You know, eating some beanie weenies and having some gas afterward does not truly count. Other things such as the feeling of your bowels not emptying completely, like you have gone, but you sit there and you continue to feel like you have to go when there's nothing that comes out as well as other systemic issues such as fevers, chills, night sweats, extreme weight loss. If any of that occurs, then definitely talk to your doctor or healthcare provider and get a checkup. So what are the screening guidelines? If you are between the age of 45 to 50, it is suggested that you consider getting screened. And that's if you are considered average risk. 
And what does average risk means? Well, that means if there is no personal history of colon cancer, as well as a family history of colon cancer, there is no hereditary diseases that make you prone to colon cancer, such as familial adenomatous polyposis or FAP, try saying that really fast, um, or Lynch syndrome, which are kind of genetic predisposition diseases that make you more likely to get colon cancer. And if you don't have things that inflame your bowels, such as inflammatory bowel disease, and specifically I'm talking about ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, and then you also must ask yourself whether or not you have a history of getting radiation to the abdomen or pelvic area due to previous cancers. So if none of that applies to you, then you're considered average risk and you should consider screening between the ages of 45 to 50. The suggestion is that you keep screening all the way up until the age of 75 and then from 76 to about 84 or 85, then this word determines, is, is based on how healthy you are, what your life expectancy and so on and so forth. And if you're above the age of 85, then the general recommendation is that you no longer uh, need any screening. I just wanna say that one important thing to know is that the what's called the fecal occult blood test, which is where you go in and your doctor gives you a rectal exam. Yeah. Okay, the doctor is in. That is not considered adequate screening. So it is suggested that if you fall on the criteria of getting the guidelines to get more done. So you've decided that you're going to get screened based on the criteria and you've spoken to your doctor, then what are the options? Well, there's mainly two categories. The first one is a stool sample. And that just means that you provide a stool and it's typically done at home, which is nice. And you bring it in and tests will be ran, mainly looking for blood. And there's another type of test that looks at DNA mutations in the stool as well. But that doesn't replace the gold standard, which is a visual inspection. By visual, there are several choices. The gold standard, which means that it's the one that you should get the, with the high sensitivity to pick up on any types of colon cancers, is a colonoscopy. So what that means is that they take a camera, a video scope, if you will, uh, with a light on the end of it, and it's about the size of my finger, and they put it up somewhere, <laughs> a little unpleasant. Uh, twilight or anesthesia or MAC anesthesia is needed due to the discomfort because they do insufflate with some air so that they, they can get a good visualization. And you do need to do a prep, which means that you drink a material that cleans you out called Go Lightly. Let me tell you something, there's nothing lightly about it. You go, but it's not light. And uh, I remember having to taste some of it back when I was a medical student a long time ago now. and it uh, leaves a lot to be desired, but it is extremely important because the prep determines everything. How well you prep will determine uh, how well the gastroenterologist will be able to visualize your entire bowel, your large colon. Then you have other tests such as CT colonography, which is basically a CT image of the colon, as well as flex voice, flexible sigmoidoscopy, which is sort of an incomplete colonoscopy, if you will, is very rarely done and also capsule endoscopy, which means that you swallow a capsule and it takes thousands of pictures as it's tumbling through your colon and all that is reviewed by a physician. None of that replaces the gold standard of the colonoscopy. And in fact, if any of that picks up on anything, you still end up getting a colonoscopy. Each one of these has its own nuances. And the most important thing is that if you fall in the category where you should get some form of screening, then talk to your doctor and go ahead and get it done. So typically what you want to do is eat more of vegetables, fruits, as well as whole grains. What you want to eat less of are things like red meat, as well as processed meats, such as hot dogs, unfortunately. I love hot dogs, but they are considered processed meat. And then just sort of overall other health measures, getting regular exercise three to four times a week at the very least, as well as maintaining an ideal body weight and avoid being obese. Uh, obesity leads to a ton of other health issues on top of increasing your risk of this type of cancer and others. And also avoid smoking, that goes without saying, and avoid any type of excessive alcohol. And the American Cancer Society basically defines excessive alcohol as more than two drinks a day for males and more than one drink a day for females. And by the way, for demonstration purposes, this is considered one drink of beer at 12 ounces. 
One drink of wine is five ounces and one drink of liquor is about one and a half ounces and this is what they all look like. I wanted to do that demonstration because I have had patients come in and for example I had a lady recently who I asked her how much she drinks a day and she was like oh yeah just one glass of wine a day. She seemed like she drank more than a glass of wine or at least that was my suspicion so I asked her about this glass of wine if you will and she, when she got to describing it, it's one of those ginormous, ginormous glasses of wine that you see, uh, that you buy for someone more as a prank than anything else. And uh, she would drink a whole glass of wine um, a night. And I think what she was describing was a glass big enough to fill probably at least half a bottle of wine. So, you know, I wanted to show that demonstration just so that you know what it looks like in the form of alcohol, whether it's beer, wine, or liquor. So moving along, there are other dietary supplements that you will come across if you research this topic, and that is uh, eating or taking a multivitamin, uh, specifically one with folate, as well as calcium, magnesium, and maintaining the appropriate level of vitamin D. I would say that all of these seems to have mixed results in regards to the research. So therefore, before doing any of this, do speak to your physician or healthcare provider about it because too much of any of this can also affect you in a negative way. One other thing that I came across was also taking NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And those are things like ibuprofen or naproxen, things like that. And they basically decrease inflammation. They have their other issues, such as um, affecting the lining of the GI tract, as well as affecting your kidneys. And you know, if you have asthma, it could cause a asthma attack if it's very bad. So there are side effects to it. So don't just start taking a NSAID without, again, consulting your physician. And that concludes this video. Again, thank you for checking out this video. And if you think anyone else can benefit from this information, please feel free to share this. And it would really help me out if you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, as well as if you want anything answered, please comment in the section down below. I'm trying to be pretty good about that and answering any types of questions. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you back on the next video. Till then, stay safe and take care. Bye-bye. That How you true choose to treat <laughs> So I, we will start off by discussing the anatomy and event. <laughs> so we will start off by discussing the anatomy and a ven very. So we will start off by discussing the anatomy and a very general. Familial adenomatous polyposis. Familial adenomatous polyposis. Familial adenomatous polyposis. Yeah. I did okay. <laughs>